What the vibe so far? Sweet with Mr. Haman, Mr. Maxi Priest, Mr. Reed, Juna Reed. Yeah, nice this. Sweet, you know. And so, I don't want to talk too much. So. <laughs> Respect, sir. You live in England. That's right. Uh, what are you doing here now? Well, I'm doing some recording with um, Gussie and also Jeremy. And, and then I find myself right here in Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown Place. I help out some young youth, them, you know, some up and coming artists, them, and try and give them a chance in life still. So, know, what can we business. expect from, from Maxi Priest? Well, kind of hard to really. So you have to kind of hear it for yourself still. Hello everybody, you're welcome back to the Reggae Appreciation Society. Jamaica is Reggae's birthplace, the home of the genre we know and love. But if Jamaica was the birthplace of Reggae, Britain can be described as the launch pad and the second home that took it to the four corners of the world. Britain has raised its own crop of legit Reggae artists over the years, like legendary Dennis Bovell, Steel Pulse, UB40, the specials, and the subject of today's video, the golden-voiced Maxi Priest. In a career that has spanned more than three decades, he's become one of the most internationally acclaimed UK reggae acts, with reggae crossover songs that topped the American Billboard charts early in his career. Unlike his first cousin, Jacob Miller, the late Jamaican lead singer of Inner Circle, who was a hardcore roots reggae artist, he's performed his fair share of crossover, but has a solid base of roots reggae songs in his repertoire. In terms of pure singing ability, I personally rate Maxi Priest as one of my top 10 reggae vocalists of all time. He's an exceptional singer, not surprising as he was a disciple of reggae's greatest singer Dennis Brown, who inspired him to become a singer in the first place. His honey-coated voice, smooth vocal delivery, perfect melody and fantastic songwriting skills make him one of the most complete artists in the genre and is what has kept him on top of his game after more than 30 years in the ever-evolving music business. Maxi Priest was born Maxwell Alfred Elliott in Lewisham, South London to Jamaican parents in 1961. It wouldn't be wrong to say he had music in his blood as his mother was a choir member in the local church, his uncle Sidney Elliott was a well-known singer in Jamaica, and Sidney Elliott's son, his cousin Jacob Miller, was also a reggae icon in Jamaica. He loved singing as a hobby, but by the time he got into his teens, he obtained training to become a carpenter and started plying his trade at construction sites around the city. His love for music was too strong to hold back, and he used to sing passionately to his crewmates at construction sites and he was so good that his colleagues would stop singing in awe at his talent, much to the irritation of their foreman who would always scream at Maxwell to shut up and get back to work. Just before he entered his 20s, he joined the UK branch of the Rastafarian church, the 12 tribes of Israel. He embraced Rastafari and was given the name Maxi Priest. He got his first exposure to the music business as a team roadie with Jashaka Sound Systems in London, helping to load and offload speakers at their various gigs. He put his carpentry skills to work for popular sound system Saxon International, constructing loudspeakers for the outfits, and eventually he got the chance to stand behind the microphone. He quickly became one of Saxon's in-house DJs and helped make it London's number one sound system alongside other Saxon DJs like Philip Levy, Smiley Culture, Tipper Irie, and Pato Banton. It was with Saxon that Maxi began to make a name for himself, performing at block parties, house parties and community youth clubs, where his good looks and silky voice first won him an appreciative female audience. He stood out among his peers due to his soulful singing style that he had acquired from emulating Dennis Brown over the years. And in 1984, he and his close friend and producer, Paul Robinson, co-produced Philip Levy's track, Me God Me King, which became the first UK reggae single get to number one on the Jamaican charts. His talents got noticed by Virgin Records and he got signed that year. He and Paul Robinson immediately began to work on songs for his album. The result was 10 songs that made up the brilliant debut called You're Safe, which was released in 1985. A phenomenal album made up of solid roots reggae tracks like In the Springtime, Should I and Throw Me Corn. The album's success earned him an invitation to the 1985 Reggae Sound Splash in Montego Bay, Jamaica. A real big deal for a non-Jamaican artist at the time, and a dream come true for Maxi Priest, as he was invited on stage to join his mentor Dennis Brown, as well as Gregory Isaacs and Freddie McGregor. His next album, Intentions, was released in 1986, and was produced by Aswad's lead singer Drummy Z, and featured instrumental contributions by members of Aswad. Intentions was also a solid album, which spawned the hit track Strolling On. 
By this time, Maxi was headlining shows at popular venues like the Britain Academy and Hammersmith Odeon. Not content with just being the biggest reggae singer in Britain, in 1987, he travelled to Jamaica with keyboard maestro Duncan Bridgman, along with Mafia and Floxy, who were England's answer to Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. It was in Kingston that he recorded his third album, Maxi, that year. The album marks his real international breakthrough, produced by Sly Dunbar and Robbie Shakespeare. It spawned hits like How Can We Ease The Pain, featuring Beres Hammond, Some Guys Have All The Luck, and the biggest song on that album, Wild World, which went to number one on the UK charts, top 10 in the United States, and broke into the charts in several countries, including Japan, where he enjoyed superstar status. Further acclaim came with his 1990 album, Bonafide, which had hits like Just A Little Bit Longer, Best of Me, and the smash hit Close To You, which was a crossover track that went to the top of the US Billboard charts in October of 1990. More than 30 years later, Maxi Priest is still the only reggae singer from anywhere, including Jamaica, to have a number one hit in America. Feel free to leave a comment below if you know anyone else that's broken that jinx. The song's appeal was driven by the awesome production and was powered by the awesome drumming of Sly Dunbar and the wonderful vocals of Maxi Priest. Maxi Priest soon caught the attention of an epic record executive in the US who had been looking for a way to package and market Jamaican dancehall DJ Shabaranks to an international audience. This female executive felt that Maxi Priest's smooth flow could be the perfect foil for Shabaranks' coarse, gravelly voice and spitfire delivery. The result was the track House Call, which became the biggest banger in Shabba's 1991 album As Raw As Ever and helped turn Shabba into the hottest dancehall artist on the planet. House Call also created a formula for a dancehall DJ and reggae singer and this style was popular for years to come. Maxi Priest is noted as being one of the forerunners of reggae crossovers and for popularizing it due to the successes of Close To You and House Call. He's been heavily criticized at times by reggae purists but he always insists that he's at his core a roots reggae and lovers rock singer who uses crossovers as a way to meet commercial goals while still attracting new fans to reggae music. After his 1992 album, Ferio, which had tracks like Grooving in the Midnight and Just Wanna Know, he ventured into acting in 1993 with his film debut in the movie Scam, which also starred Christopher Walken and Lorraine Bracco. Three years later, he came back with a new album called Man With The Fun, which featured a remake of The Police's Message In A Bottle and the hit song That Girl featuring Shaggy. He kept up his relevance in the game with a steady release of music with five albums released between 1999 and 2007. In 2008, he was invited by UB40 to be the band's new lead singer after the acrimonious exit of former lead singer Ali Kamba. He accepted the offer and went on tour with the group that year and also released an album with them called 24-7. It's amazing how consistent Maxi Priest has been with a steady slew of albums. His last solo album was 2019's It All Comes Back to Love, featuring the likes of Shaggy, Bounty Killer and his late cousin's band, Inner Circle. Interestingly, the music still runs in the Elliot bloodline, as three of his sons, Shay, Marvin and Ryan Elliot, are also in the music business. He's a co-founder of Madhouse Records and hopes it can be a platform for young artists to launch themselves into global reckoning. He's still touring and wowing audiences all over the world with a legendary voice and cheeky good looks. Maxi Priest is still on top of his game and will go down as one of the greatest reggae vocalists of all time. So there you have it. Thank you for watching the video today. Please leave a like, subscribe, and until next time, Jobless.